Hello, welcome to another video in Plant and Cloud Essentials video series. In this video, we are going to create production environment for the cookie store app that we have been building. The app is currently working in dev environment with a, a website, a web app integrated with REST API written in Java, which is connected to a Postgres database. All of those resources have been created from Plant and Cloud console and uh, the microservices were deployed to the environments from GitHub using the magic pipelines configured by Plant and Cloud. So now that the app is successfully running in the dev environment, we want to uh, promote the pro app into production environment. So let's see how we can accomplish that on Plant and Cloud console. So the goal is to create production environment by cloning dev environment. The steps to accomplish this goal are clone dev environment and then we will explore the resources created or cloned by the clone operation. We'll, we'll have to update the deployment config YAML files in the Git repositories to create separate configuration for dev environment and production environments. And then we'll have to update the magic pipeline in order to be able to have the GitLab workflow jobs deploy the microservices to the new production environment. We'll also have to update the database password uh, in the secret and then finally test the microservices after they're deployed to production. So the first step is to clone dev environment and explore the cloned resources. So to do that we'll go to console, click on clone, change the environment name, disable build engine flag and then move on to exploring the cloned resources, which are standard endpoints, Postgres database, product secret, and microservice deployment environments. We are on console, and I chose web shop as the product. Now we can go to the product environments, and then there is an option to create a clone from this environment, and when you clone product environment, if there is a database in dev, a new database gets created in production and uh, if there is any endpoints created in dev those endpoints will be created in prod as well we are going to clone but we are going to give it a new name called production and this is going to be production environment and uh, we are going to use the same artifact instance and everything else will remain the same except that this is not a build engine environment and uh, click create and because production is cloned from dev environment we will we should be able to immediately see new endpoints get created so as you can see we we have already we already see a cookie store endpoint for both dev and prod we see a new postgres database come online it is already created and is probably running we will also see the secret created for the production to store the production database password and we'll also see that all the microservices have been updated to deploy to the newly created uh, production environment so all of those things have been completed by just like clicking on that clone operation verifying the details of uh, the newly created environment we see that new namespaces got created for the microservices and the Postgres database. But there will not be any microservice parts yet because we have not deployed to this environment yet. And going back to the Postgres cluster, we see that this is the Coop DNS. This is the endpoint that we are going to use for connecting to the database to in production. And we can copy the value of this database. We can view it and then copy it and then proceed to updating the secret in, in the secret that got created with the clone operation. So we are going to update the secret value for prod database and we are going to copy this and click update. Now that all of these have already been completed, we'll move on to the next operation. So now I have to clone all the core projects and then add the new configuration to separate out the dev and pr production environment configuration and then publish the changes to Git. So to do that, I'm going to run this command. So I'm on my terminal and I can copy, uh, clone all the projects by running this one command. And uh, plant and CLI will query the backend 
to list all the core project that are linked to this particular product and those are all cloned to my machine right now. However, uh, it is important to configure the git SSH in order for these clone operations to succeed. Now I'm going to open the API repository and uh, basically update the configuration to create a new configuration file to separate out the configuration for dev and production. So the environment variables and uh, secrets are going to be different for both the environments. So this is going to be same. These are these values are going to remain same for all the environments. So I'm going to remove. So only DB host and DB password are going to be different for dev and prod. So I created prod. So the name of these YAML files should match the name of the environment name on Planton. So here I'm going to change the host name from dev to prod for production and uh, that's it. These are the changes that we need to push to make separate out the configuration for dev and prod. Added dev.yaml and prod.yaml. And similarly, I'm going to update the web app to add configuration, separate configuration for both dev and production. So here we have one file. I'm going to add another file called dev.yaml. And in this file, uh, we are going to basically copy this value because it is it is no longer same for all environments. So we are going to duplicate this and call it prod. And for production, the API URL going is backend API URL is going to have prod in the name. So now we are pushing these changes upstream. Now that this step is completed, we move on to the next step, which is we want to deploy the microservices to production. We have already updated the DB password secret value on console. So we simply, we are now going to update the CICD magic pipeline so that uh, a new job is added to the pipeline steps to deploy the microservice to production. So we go to the console and uh, we navigate to the microservices. And uh, for each of these microservices, we simply click on update magic pipeline. And now because there is an additional environment for each of these, we will see updates in uh, on the Git repository. So we just updated the website and uh, a new commit was recently made. And as you can see, a new files have been added to deploy to production. And we are going to repeat this process for the remaining two microservices and this one as well. Now, all three pipelines should have magic pipeline running. GitHub action should have been running for all the three microservices now. So if you go to, yeah, we see that build is running for uh, the three projects. We'll wait for the build and deployment steps to complete for all the three projects, website, backend API, and web app. And finally, once these are completed, we are going to uh, test that the app works in production. Okay, so all of the deployments for both dev and production have been completed on GitHub for the app, API, and website. So we can proceed and check the production URLs to see if the same versions of the microservices are accessible via production endpoints. So the website works and then we can navigate to the app so which is cookie store app main dot prod so we see the app and then for uh, the api it's going to be the same endpoint except api so all the three endpoints are working without really putting in a lot of effort we got a new environment including the database all the microservices deployed to uh, production all right, so all of that environment cloning happened so quick. So I want to use an infographic to help you better understand what happened in the last few minutes while we were trying to clone dev environment with a goal to create the production environment. So here we are looking at infographic of what the environment is like. So we had a website the users were accessing from within the browser and then we have our 
web app wherein the to do items were being listed and the user is able to perform actions so when the user enters these urls the app is being rendered from a pod running within kubernetes for each of these microservices for the app we have a nextjs app pod running inside the kubernetes and for the java api that is the responsible for loading the data on the ui is also running as a separate pod on the kubernetes cluster and the data itself is coming from the database sitting next to the api pod that is also running within the same kubernetes cluster now also notice that when we were, we created a dev environment the whole time we never touched any dns elements the only time we did anything with dns was when we connected the pc cookie store from godaddy to planton cloud and after that everything was automatic which was the best part and now that we have the app running in the dev environment being accessible over our, the dev endpoints we want to essentially create a replica of the whole thing so that we have another version of the app that is intended or that will be eventually be exposed for the end users this is like the typical scenario or workflow that most of the products work right so we we achieved creating that replica by simply clicking on clone icon on the console app so what happened behind the scenes was as soon as we clicked on clone a new database was created and then remember that we clicked on clone so we already were trying the planton cloud knows that your intention is to create a replica of this environment because that is where you clicked on clone so planton cloud immediately provisions every all the resources that exist in that environment starting from the database and the new microservices will also be configured to deploy to this new environment and the dns endpoints are also automatically configured and finally after the microservices were successfully deployed by the github actions with again the automatic magic ca cd pipelines coming to action we have a complete replica of the whole thing without us writing a single line of operations code and uh, we were able to access the production versions of the app using these endpoints so essentially when you put in this endpoint you are being directed to a different pod running either on the same kubernetes cluster depending on which hosting environment was chosen for the production environment it is totally possible that planton cloud allows you to put your product production environment in one kubernetes and dev environment in one kubernetes cluster or if you choose to you can run both on the same kubernetes cluster hope this infographic helped you better understand what went behind the scenes when you clicked on clone hope this helped you understand how clone operation works and helps you to quickly create environments on planton cloud thank you